talk to them about their ministry. How long have you two been publishers? Nearly three and a half years now. Okay, they've been talking at the door since the age of five, he said. So, tell us, how old are you two? Eleven going on twelve. But I am twenty-four minutes older than I think. <laughs> I had to get that little dig in there. So you're twins. Okay, good. So let me ask you this. What various avenues or types of ministry do you engage in? We have the privilege to go and door to door witnessing and also parking lot witnessing. Okay. Tell us, what did you say, Ali, are you at door-to-door -door in parking lot in Isaac? We've also done letter writing and school witnessing. Okay, school witnessing. Yeah, for example, this semester I have music class, and that's why I don't sing certain songs. Uh, they don't sing certain, what kind of songs are they singing then? Well, they sing some religious songs. Oh, okay. So what do you say? Well, I tell them that I choose not to sing those songs because they contradict my beliefs. Well, then how do they respond? Are you able to give more of a witness? Well, sometimes they'll just end a conversation like that, but other times they'll ask more questions about my beliefs, so I am able to give more of a witness. Mm -hmm. Well, then do you count them as return visits? <laughs> <laughs> Try that again. school now, we're going to talk about regular field ministry. Uh, how many return visits do you two have? Isaac has around 11, and I have 13 return visits. 13? Isaac, she has more than you? Yeah, but that's only because I give her the girl calls. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so, with service so important to you two, how do you prepare to go out? Well, on Friday nights we try to prepare by getting the magazines we want, and looking over the presentation to those magazines, and also the calls we want, and to t what to talk about with them. And we also take the time to set out our clothes for the next day, and get our book bags ready with the proper amount of books, magazines, and tracks, and our term visit book, and our Bible that we carry in our hands. Uh, that's a good point, because then you're able to use it more often, right? When you have it. Well, sounds like you're ready. But let me ask you this. Let's pretend that your mom doesn't go out that day. Do you two stay home? Only if we're sick, but if we're healthy, then we do go out. Okay. Well, you do appear a bit young to be driving, so how do you get out? Well, sometimes our mom will make arrangements for older ones in the congregation to pick us up, but sometimes we call ahead ourselves. We don't want to miss our time in service. And we really do appreciate how the friends go out of their way to help us get into the ministry. Uh, you know what, I'm sure they appreciate having you in the ministry. You seem like you're quite enjoyable. Uh, now, you go through a lot of effort here to, to make it out in service. Why is service so important to you? Oh, we want to help all the people learn about Jehovah and we want to save some lives. And what better way to use your time in a way that Jehovah is proud of? And plus, it's fun. It's fun, it is. Now, but I'll say, some people don't find it quite so enjoyable. Why do you? Because we enjoy the time that we get to spend with um, with the friends that we get to work with. And we like pleasing Jehovah. He blesses you. And besides, the more time you spend in the service, the better it gets. You're right there. Good point. Now, you two are still in school. So what days do you regularly go out in service? Saturdays and at least half the Sundays during the months, either before or after the meetings. Okay. So during school months, how many hours do you average per month? 10 to 15 hours per month. But during our summer break, we try to get an auxiliary pioneer hours if we can. Very nice. So your service is more than just placing tracks and magazines, right? Oh, yes. We also participate in the direct Bible study approach. Do you really? Oh, now, how do you do that? Well, I open up to page 4 and 5 of the Bible teach book and ask if they would like to see any of those promises fulfilled in their lifetime. 
Okay, well, let's see, you came to my door, you showed me that picture, and I said, hmm, I think I like the one about no more sickness. Then what? Well, first I would hand them their book, then I would look in my book, which has a page and paragraph of where to turn to. In your case, it would be found on page 36 and paragraph 22. Okay, well, we turned to page 36, and we read paragraph 22. Now what do you say? So maybe when I come back next week, we can discuss more on that topic. Oh, excellent. Wow. So you, you've got the book in their hand, you were short to the point, and you've got a return visit already lined up next week. Nicely done. Well, Ali, let me ask you this. When you're not using the direct approach, what, what does your presentation sound like? Well, I start off by introducing my name, and then I'll ask an opinion question, and then read a scripture. Do people usually respond? For the most part, they do. Okay. Then what happens? Then I either place the book or the magazines, depending on what their answer was to the question. Oh, come on. It can't be that easy, is it? Actually, it is. I even have a doorstep study. No kidding. How'd you do that? Well, it happened during the last tract campaign, Would You Like to Know the Truth? Would you like me to show you? I would love to see that. We'd like to ask for the Brian Likens to come out and assist in helping out. And I'm going to set the scene here. Uh, Brian Likens is the householder. And since we never send our children to the door without protection and supervision, we're going to pretend that Isaac has grown to about, oh, six foot two. <laughs> and he's about 180 pounds. So now, let's see what happened. Have you ever thought of any of these questions? Does God really care about us? Will warrant suffering ever in? What happens to us when we die? I've thought about, does God really care about us? Well, when you turn to the inside cover, it answers that in the first paragraph, if you like to read it. It says, God never calls us what is wicked. Far be it from the true God to act wickedly and the Almighty to act unjustly, says Job 34.10. God has a loving purpose for humans. That is why Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father in the heavens, let your kingdom come, let your will take place as in heaven also upon earth. God cares so deeply about us that he has gone to great lengths to make the fulfillment of his purpose a certainty. Well, what is God's purpose for the earth? Well, I have this book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? And when you turn to chapter 3, it answers that question. Um, notice how in the first paragraph it brings out that God planted a garden in Eden, and it was meant to be like Adam and Eve first had it, and Jehovah does promise to have that again. Well, I don't know if I want to live with people like they are now. Well, the Bible mentions something about that. It's in Psalms 20, I mean 37, 29. It says, The righteous themselves will possess the earth, and they will reside forever upon it. So it brings out that you will only live with righteous people. And that book goes in more about what God's kingdom is and how it will come about on earth. Wow. Can I have this book? Yes. It's of no charge to you. And maybe next week I can stop by and answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. That sounds great. That was very good, Molly. So how's it going with that call? Well, it's doing great, and every time I return on him, he is very enthusiastic, and he always says something like, I've been waiting for you. Wow, that is good. Sounds like you're uh, ready to turn him over to a brother now, right? Yes. Good for you. <laughs> well, you two, you're doing so well. You're progressing very nicely. Tell us, what are your spiritual goals? We like to be regular pioneers. Well, that is great. <laughs> Good news, how exciting. Now, I hate to put the cart before the horse here, but uh, don't you have to be baptized first? Yeah, that's true, you know. So when do you plan on being baptized? We already did this morning. <laughs> Thank you.